All right, this is, believe it or not, one of my favorite loadouts ever. Uh, I'm not even kidding. This is one of my, like, relax and chill loadouts, and I'm surprised it's only ever been shown on my channel once. If you guys remember in my five super fun loadouts video, which you should totally check out, I made two of them, link to those down below, I Hello. featured, I, it, it, well, it's true, I featured a crack shot and scourge combo loadout. This loadout is complete DPS. I have wafers on here. I'm going to switch that to fumble because the idea is that with crack shot and the scourge, you never have to stop to reload. And I paired it with Totally Rockin' Out, because why not? Uh, you could, I guess, do like... I, I don't actually know. Can the... I don't think the Scourge can have triple crit damage. If it can, that's absolutely mind-blowing. It cannot. That's good, because this weapon would be nuts with that. However, this is just a regular Scourge build, in my opinion. It's pretty standard, all damage. And as long as you don't let it overheat, you can get the max stacks from Crack Shot and Bullets from Jonesy and Support. And it is a really, really strong build. Um, so yeah. We're going to be messing around with that in this video, and it's going to be some of the highest damage output you might ever see in this game, because it's a really, really strong combo. Alright, let's see. Let's see. Alright, warming up against the Smasher. I killed one fatty already. We're going to take care of the Ride Husky. Not even max stack. Distance, damage drop off. Pretty good. Pretty good. I think once we get warmed up and once we get multiple targets, it might do more. Multiple targets is tricky because healing death burst is going to get in our way, but uh, that's just a taste of what's to come. All right, we're just going to clean up this area to show you guys what this loadout is capable of. Nurses, by the way, easy peasy. Strongest IR in the game, plus I think one of the highest damaging loadouts. I mean, one of the is easy and it's kind of a cop out. I don't know if it's the highest damage output because totally rocking out plus crack shot might not be better than sledgehammer plus totally rocking out but it's still just a ludicrous amount of damage and i have to be very careful to avoid enemies because i don't uh don't have a lot of heal oh my god don't have a lot of healing in this build so i have to play it a little safe but my enemies are just running away so we're just gonna cut to the defense here and i have an idea for that all right, so I don't always show the building in these videos, but this time around, I have a unique idea. Uh, because this build is basically all damage, the only healing in this entire thing is totally rocking out, and my enemies are healing death burst, I'm going to be building myself a little bit of a platform. Just a nice little ring for me to stand on. Uh, I'm going to put down a few just healing pads, and then I'll put uh, campfires in the corners since those burn out. I'll put those after the defense starts, but I'm going to make myself a nice little killing floor. Um, the ramps were intended for me to have something to shoot at, and I guess I can stand in the middle and sort of work with that, but ultimately... I'm going to have the enemies come to me. So if we fail this mission, it's probably because of insufficient trapping. That's entirely my fault. But uh, I'm going to set it up so that the enemies are flowing in a nice, easy, shootable pattern. And I'll show you what that looks like once we get it set up. All right. We're going to be doing a build somewhat similar to what I've done before. But this is a mostly not trapped, just a lot of stalling builds. I am putting enough confidence in this little watchtower up here that... I should, me and the teammates combined, be able to do everything here. Base is going to go down in the middle. Popcorn's got it taken care of. And basically, we're just going to start off with the uh, first enemies first. Now, down here on the south side, the ceiling electric fields are just thinning the herd. They're taking out a lot of the basic baby zombies. And it's going to help activate... Oh my god, look at the damage. It's going to help activate Totally Rockin' Out. And I'm not going to be able to kill anything. I'm going to ask my teammates that can hear me on the stream right now to kill anything that gets close enough to the base. But you can kind of see how this build just deletes stuff. For those of you who might not know, the Scourge has one of the highest range uh, of any AR. It's actually 5,120. Yeah, see, in my brain, 4,000 is a long range, but the Scourge actually has about 5,000. So the damage drop off, like I mentioned earlier with the Smasher, isn't... Oh, <laughs> that damage isn't actually as prevalent as you might think. This is a max stack, totally rocking out active build here. This is just... It's so good. I really enjoy running this build. Um, I would have put the campfires down, but I haven't even needed them. And with the healing pads around me, I don't think I will. This is more than enough damage. Um, of course, there are going to be stragglers, but my teammates or even ceiling electric fields are really good at taking care of that. If you ever wanted to solo 160s without trapping or stalling, this is honestly probably a viable way. Um, just making yourself a nice little watchtower, sloping it the way I did, and giving yourself tons of easy area to shoot at. It is one of 
my favorite loadouts in the game. I don't have a favorite because different loadouts suit different moods. You know, I have favorite melee loadouts that I really can't compare to my favorite base loadouts, favorite farming loadouts. If I'm just looking to screw around and do a redonkulous amount of damage, this is one of the builds I always go to. And I'm, I, I gotta make sure every time I get red to not let it overheat, it's so satisfying. Even a flinger, look at that. With the damage drop off being nearly non-existent, you can actually do some really good damage to environmental structures and look at that flinger so far away took care of him like it's nothing like it's nothing and if, of course if i miss any uh teammates uh be sure to take out flingers although honestly with a build like this a kind of defensive build where instead of running around i'm sort of saying yeah come to me uh let me at him um i'm not really nervous about flingers because they're just gonna be throwing enemies in an area where i am well defended here so yeah uh, we're open on the southwest, you guys, if you want to put up some walls. I don't think it's strictly necessary right now, but something to watch out for, for sure. Super good. Super... Oh my god, it's so much damage. This weapon, plus totally rocking out, already running double crit damage. Uh, it's... it's... it's just so much. <laughs> it's so good. So good! I want to get some smashers coming. Um, if we can take care of them, that would be really satisfying. I believe the best way to use the Scourge here as well uh, is probably switching off between two targets like that. Ah, oh, I overheated! No! That means we need to start over with the Crack Shot. You can see uh, the Crack Shot bonuses. You can see how much less it does. But yeah, once they're confined like that, it essentially forces them to walk into a tube where that expanding ring of damage that you get from the Scourge, that explosion, is... Oh, here we go. Smashers incoming. Look at the hell! Look at... Ah, I overheated! I got too excited! That's okay. Um, it already does a ton of damage. It's totally rocking out. So crack shot isn't totally necessary, and it builds up really easily. As long as you don't reload or stop to build. That's why we don't have wafers. I know I'm not even getting fumble right now. Look at that. Stopped on the Ice King. Thank you, Poplio, for running that. Uh, is Poplio in the Twitch chat, but Popcorn in the game. Oh, that damage. When you do more than the uh, healing death burst, you know you're doing something right. Oh, don't overheat. Oh, that was close. Stopped him just shy of the base again. I think there's another smasher down there that I can't reach, and I can't edit that because there are sea electric fields. Two smashers at once. Uh, one at a time is probably ideal. I know switching off, you get more damage of the scourge, but uh, the healing down first. Did that overheat? Oh come on! I stop. I totally stopped early. Can we get a ref on that? This is this is this is this isn't fair. Oh, somebody popped a war cry. I didn't even know we had a war cry. I also asked my teammates to let me have the mini boss. So if it's not, if it's not trap durability or durability, not trap vulnerable, we should uh, we should be seeing some crazy numbers on that. Uh, we're back to spawning over here in the northeast, which is honestly pretty easy. I put all of these floor freeze facing the correct direction, so none of them are gonna get anywhere. It's gonna be pretty easy cleanup over there. Lots of basic zombies. They die to this build very comfortably. It's uh, not even that big of a deal. I'm hoping for a mini boss soon, or some more smash. Look at that. Nurses. They can't even... Oh, these are the throwing thoughts, not nurses. Uh, throwing thoughts and healing hose is, of course, the uh, the proper lingo for these, these, char these characters. But not going to be a problem because they get taken out just far too easily. There we go. Our mini boss. Building blocker fire. Let's see how much damage you can do from just back here. Let him get closer and closer. I need Totally Rockin' Out to be active for this to be super useful. But... I think we're gonna have a good time. So let me shoot down here. Maybe I can get Battle Beat kicked in. There we go. All right, Battle Beat's active. How much damage can we do? Ah, uh, doing pretty good. Honestly, Coco 45 killed a little faster. I don't know. I think I'm, uh, I think I'm Team Coco 45 on this one. But I don't even have Totally Rockin' Out active right now, I don't believe. No, I don't. So with that active, this would be doing so much more. Uh, the enemies just aren't spawning where I have traps down, so. It's still. I, <laughs> that would have been much faster with totally rocking out, but it, it doesn't it doesn't even matter. It's, it's so satisfying. Thank you, teammates, for letting me have that. But soloing a mini he has killed my cone. Ugh! I have a cone to get up here, and he destroyed it every time. Well, that will make it tricky to get up. I have to kill my. Oh shoot! I didn't even know that. Uh, well. I, uh, that, that renovation was made without my knowledge. I apologize. <laughs> we just got to get our stacks back, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. Once the mini boss is out of the way and the smashers have always already come and gone, assuming we don't get some smasher waves, we should be completely fine. The, uh, enemies are really spread out on this defense right now, and they're not really too much of a threat, so 
yeah, just taking out the Mist Monsters is perfect because the uh, extra damage you get from the Scourge is really capable of taking out those enemies. I mean, that explosion damage just has great area of effect. The damage itself is super strong to take out the big targets. In all honesty, I feel like they've built pretty much the perfect AR here. You don't even need to reload. You just kind of stop shooting every once in a while, which is similar to reloading, but you're not stuck to it. So if you want to run it into overheating, you can, but the amount of time you stop, like, look at that. If I run it all the way red, it's like one, two, three, and that whole time you could start shooting again. So if you want to like reload only a few shots, basically, that's basically, if you shoot it like I just did, you just wait a little bit, you're kind of just waiting half a second, getting 10 of your bullets, and then shooting again. It's like if you were reloading a Bobcat, which is a 50 round mag, and then just stopping 10 bullets in to resume combat. That's what you can do with these weapons that have a, a heating capacity. So it's similar to stopping to reload, but much more versatile. And if you're on top of it, it's significantly more effective. But of course it makes it um, something you have to really consider because you're always watching that bar. That bar, if it gets red and it overheats, I have 50 shots to fire before I'm back up to max damage, and that could waste a little bit of ammo. That's why I welcome the flingers right there. Um, but it's it's not too big of a deal. Just something to keep on top of. Ah, oh, I wanted to dare the flinger to shoot me, but I killed it too fast. Let me see it. There we go. I'm basically an anti-air. Thank you for the war cry, by the way. Oh, I wish I would have had that during the mini boss. So good. So good. Definitely my favorite build um, to use casually. I don't know if it's my favorite build. Overall, I, I don't know. I go back and forth. My favorite weapons, they change all the time. But either way, you should try this loadout because it's insane. Also, went through about two and a half thousand uh, energy cells this game. Not too bad. Thank you guys so much for watching. Comment what you want to see down below. And I'll see you in the next one. And then...